Styes are extremely common, and most patients will develop a sty or chalazion at some point. So what do we need to know to take fast action? In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. Shireen Vaz Happily will be discussing treatment options and preventative measures to avoid developing these uncomfortable conditions. Dr. Vaz Happily? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Please welcome Dr. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Shireen Vaz Happily. Dr. Vaz Happily, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, no problem. <laughs> happy to be here. Well, we're happy that you are here, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to visit with us. Uh, so Dr. Vaz Happily, before we get going here, uh, I was hoping that maybe you can introduce yourself to our audience, uh, let them know a little bit about your background and your specialty. Sure. Hi, I'm Dr. Shireen Vizapoli. Uh, I'm an optometrist that works uh, as an associate optometrist at a lens crafters practice um, just outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, I graduated from the University of Waterloo School of Optometry in 2019, uh, worked in Canada for about a year and a half before my journey led me to the United States. And it's my first state that I'm working in in Ohio. And it's been it's been a great journey so far. Well, excellent introduction there, Dr. Vaz Happily. Again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, so, Dr. Vaz Happily, for our discussion today, we were hoping that maybe you could talk to us a little bit about the difference between a Shalazian versus styes. So, to start off with, what is a Shalazian? Great question. Uh, a Shalazian is a benign blockage of the oil gland. It usually appears as a large, non tender mass. It might have started off as a sty. Um, it's usually not painful. It's kind of a red bump that you can physically see sometimes on the eyelid itself. Gotcha. So now uh, that we know what a Shalazian is, what, what, what's a sty? A sty, um, also called a hordeolum, on the contrary, is often painful. It can also be red, tender. It's a bacterial infection of the hair follicles or of the eyelid or of the eyelid glands themselves. It can look like a pimple if it's more external um, with a protruding white head. Doesn't mean that you should pop it, though. Definitely don't pop it. <laughs> well, definitely. I probably would be the one who does try to pop it and you tell, tell me a no-no there. <laughs> Well, thank you. For, thank you for that, Dr. Vaz Happily. And so how common are these in, in general? Yeah, they are extremely common. Um, in fact, most people have them at least once in their lifetime, if not more. Um, I see them in my clinic almost every week, if not almost every day. Uh, it's very, very common, uh, especially nowadays with so much dry eye disease. Um, a lot of people, you know, being out after COVID again, wearing eye makeup and things like that, definitely more common nowadays. <laughs> Fantastic information, Dr. Vaz Happily. Thank you for that. And so what are the what are the risk factors or who's most at risk for developing uh, one of these conditions? And, and what are what are those risk factors uh, for developing one of those conditions? Um, anyone can be at uh, risk for developing a sty or chalazion. Uh, the people that are most at risk are people with blocked oil glands, so the meibomian glands on the top and bottom lid of the eyelids. People who have uh, blepharitis, um, which is, you know, that buildup of bacteria um, are on the lashes. People who have had them before, of course, are very prone or more at risk uh, to having them again. Uh, people with acne rosacea, seborrheic keratitis, uh, and other conditions that may lead to, you know, more blockage, more of the blockage of the oil glands. Um, and of course, people that don't have, you know, great eyelid hygiene, people that do wear a lot of eye makeup, especially if they sleep in the eye makeup and don't wash it off at night. Um, and people who wear, you know, lash extensions or false eyelashes, uh, don't clean them properly or don't give them their eyes a break uh, in between the lash extensions and false eyelash wear. Fantastic information. Thank you, Dr. Baz Halfley. And what are the different treatment options that are available? And are, are, are they different? Yeah, so there's a lot of different uh, treatment options available. It kind of depends on uh, what stage you've kind of caught it, uh, right? So the the most common thing that everybody will see, you know, if they look up how to treat a sty or chalazion, uh, is going to be a warm compress. Uh, usually to my patients, I recommend a warm compress that you can heat up, something you can heat up in the microwave and put on top of the eye so that it stays hotter for longer. Uh, usually a washcloth under hot tap water just doesn't stay hot enough for 
long enough um, to have any proven benefit from what we can see. Um, the other things also, um, you know, lid scrubs, lid massages to really massage and relieve that blockage of the oil gland if that's where it's coming from. Um, and of course, if, you know, you come and see us, um, it, it's later on in the stage, we're usually going to recommend something like a topical or, a, or an oral antibiotic um, to help get rid of that infection or inflammation quicker uh, and more, more thoroughly. Uh, sometimes we do have to send it to a specialist. Um, sometimes what they'll do, especially for Calasian, they can do like a steroid shot they can also go in um, and excise it or drain it out as well if it's something that's non-resolving um, or if something you know that the patient would benefit from. For example, if that calasian is really huge, it's pressing on the eye and it's you know causing that vision to be really blurry, then it might be something that has to be excised out. Um, other than that, you know, other preventative measures like um, IPL, um, as well as lipid flow to help anything to help relieve uh, constant blockage of the oil glands can also be things to look at for people that have recurrent styes and calasians. Oh, well, excellent information, Dr. Vass Halfley. And you actually just touched on it a little bit at the end of that answer there. I just wanted to maybe if you could expand on it just a little bit more. Uh, can, can this all be avoided? And what are any other preventative measures that we can do to uh, make sure this doesn't happen to us? Absolutely. Yeah. The most uh, common and the most effective, you know, method of a, or effective cure, I should say, is prevention, right? So definitely cleaning um, the eyelashes daily. I kind of liken it to, you know, brushing your teeth every day and flossing so you don't get cavities. Um, in the same way, we need to be cleaning our eyelashes and our eyelids. Most of us, when we're washing our face, we try to avoid the eye area and the eyelash area so that, you know, soap doesn't get in there and sting and burn. Um, there's actually a lot of great eyelid cleansers that are available over the counter and eyelid wipes as well if you're on the go that can help to clean up um, all of that, you know, um, bacteria and debris on the lashes, uh, get them really, really clean so they just don't cause a problem later on like a sty um, or a calasian. Uh, I usually recommend my patients to do preventative hot compresses um, as we kind of discussed earlier with the hot compresses, something you can heat up in the microwave is best and also to have an eyelid cleansing foam that they use morning and night just to get rid of all that blepharitis um, and keep those lashes really really clean um, i usually also do recommend having some eyelid wipes if you're traveling or on the go uh, some people prevent or uh, prefer to use those day to day as well and definitely making sure that your eye makeup you wash off at the end of the day uh, and you throw away all of your old or contaminated makeup that's very important, especially if you've just, you know, got away from having a sty or calasian and you still have that same eye makeup. It's a good time to throw it away. Uh, the other thing that I would also say um, about that is uh, in the past, we used to recommend baby shampoo. I just don't think that's as effective as a treatment anymore. There's so many great options available over the counter. So that's what I really recommend for my patients. Well, excellent information all around, Dr. Vaz Hafley. And uh, I wanted to ask you, and I, I know you probably touched on it a little bit again on, on that previous answer, but I wanted to ask, how, how important is it and how much do you stress to your patients? How important is eyelid hygiene in like protecting themselves from something like a Schlesian or sty? Yeah, eyelid hygiene is definitely um, the utmost, most important thing that you can do. Um, I would say, uh, you know, for the front eyelids and eyelashes, especially if you're somebody prone to getting those styes. Uh, and calasians. Um, I, again, you always love to use that oral hygiene, um, you know, example, because we're also conscious of our teeth and how our teeth look. Um, and, you know, we're very sensitive to any pain in our teeth. Um, in the same way, we should also be really aware of how our eyelids and eyelashes um, look and feel, um, make sure we clean them thoroughly every night, every evening. Um, I also really recommend for my patients that wear false eyelashes um, or, you know, eyelash extensions. That's very common nowadays to make sure they're really, really careful about getting in there and cleaning because that can, you know, breed so much bacteria and debris around the base of the lashes. So it is of the utmost importance. And I think until you have that sty or calasian, you kind of, you know, don't realize that. And then you go back and said, you know, say, oh, I really should have done um, something more for my eyelids and eyelashes.
Well, I definitely always love the uh, the similarity between brushing the teeth and keeping care of the eyes, so that makes it easy for me to remember. So hopefully it makes everyone else remember that easily too. Uh, so Dr. Best Hapley, uh, what are the signs or symptoms that someone would be on alert for that maybe, you know, something uh, something's wrong, I may be getting a sty or chalazian? Um, a lot of the uh, symptoms are coming from, you know, that inflammatory cycle. So usually redness, um, tenderness, pain, um, it's giving off heat. Um, you can feel or see that there's a mass kind of happening on the eyelid if you're looking very carefully. Um, you can also feel like a scratchy feeling like there might be something in your eye, crusting or debris around the lashes or waking up with more crusting or debris than normal. Um, also increased tearing, uh, swelling of the eyelid. Those are all signs that something's changing around the eyelid um, and eyelash margin. And it should be something that, you know, you start uh, compressing right away and, and get to see an eye specialist or an eye doctor um, in your area. Well, excellent. Actually, you and you just touched on it that as right away when you find something out, uh, use the warm compresses and see your eye doctor. So I was going to ask, when should someone go see uh, you if, if something was like that was happening? And so it should be immediately right away, right? Yeah, I usually like people to come and see me immediately just so that I can rule out um, other conditions that it could be, um, for example, dry eye disease, or if there's, you know, some sort of a scratch truly at the front of the eye, if it's some sort of contact lens related complication, um, or if it's a uveitis, other things that could maybe mimic some of the symptoms um, that a sty or chalazion could. That's the main reason I'd like my patients to come see me so I can say, okay, for sure, this is, you know, a sty or chalazion. And, and here are the treatments that I recommend that are proven and in the literature on how to treat it effectively and early so that it doesn't, you know, become something uh, that is that maybe requires more attention or a specialist visit. Well, fantastic information, Dr. Bess Halfley. And let's just say for uh, for argument's sake, I, I'm a terrible patient and I probably am actually. But uh, if, I, if I'm terrible and I, I notice that so there's itching and burning and there's some, there's there's something going on with my eye. Um, what, and I, it, it indeed is in fact a styr chalazian and I, I, let's say I don't, I don't go get it treated. I'm like, ah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Like I got to continue, keep on doing what I'm doing. Um, what can happen if something like a styr chalazian goes untreated? Good question. Um, so for a sty, uh, we know that it's usually some sort of a bacterial infection. Um, and with the bacterial infection, sometimes that infection can travel and kind of cause that whole eyelid to swell. Um, and then it can turn into a different condition like a preceptal cellulitis or in very rare cases, something like an orbital cellulitis, which is much, much more serious and requires definitely a way stronger dose of, um, you know, oral antibiotics, sometimes, um, you know, oral topical and intravenous antibiotics as well to get that treated. So it can actually become uh, quite a complication. It can definitely be something that's scythe threatening from what seeming, you know, what was seemingly so benign in the first place. So infection can be very, very serious and, and that's why it should be treated. Um, and, you know, that should be the priority to getting that sty kicked out of there. Um, the chalazion is something that's usually um, not much, not as much of an infection, um, but it's usually more of kind of a, a mass, uh, and it can be a little bit more permanent um, on the eyelid. It can be a permanent mass. It can get bigger um, and larger, and it can actually start to obstruct your vision in that, you know, the eyelid might droop down a little bit from the mass itself, or that can induce astigmatism by pressing against the eyelid uh, or the eyeball, excuse me, and cause your vision to become more blurry than it normally would be. On top of being, you know, kind of unsightly as well, it can make a person more self-conscious as well of their appearance in their eye, um, which is an important factor to consider the psychological effect of it. Um, and usually, you know, that's when we're thinking about sending it to a specialist to surgically excise it or drain it out. Um, so that can be that can be a viable option for Clazian to prevent those uh, to prevent that from happening. Well, those all sound very bad and uh, definitely would need to go see you uh, right away when that happens <laughs> just to make sure none of that happens. <laughs> well, Dr. Bass Hathley, thank you so much. And uh, I did have a one last question or a couple last questions, excuse me. Uh, but uh, are there any, when it comes to chalazians or styes or anything that, uh, that's on the eye care horizon right now, are, are there any new technologies or developments that we should be on the lookout for? 
Great question. Um, definitely, I've heard about, you know, um, different compounds kind of in the work, not so much for maybe a sty or chalazion, but for um, blepharitis, specifically demodex blepharitis. I know there are some things on the horizon for that. Um, in terms of the technologies that we're already using, such as IPL, um, such as lippy flow and lippy scan to image to image those meibomian glands, um, I think those are great tools kind of, um, you know, for people as a preventative measure for people who are already known to have meibomian gland dysfunction, maybe people who are already prone to getting styes and chalazians, um, this can be a solution that's more of a, a preventative measure um, to prevent it from happening in the first place. Um, other than that, I think I'm still um, kind of looking, you know, to see what else is going to come out in the uh, in the horizon. We know that dry eye is a huge problem. There's a lot of things kind of coming out with that. And we know that a big part of uh, dry eye is coming from the eyelids. Um, so, you know, it's it's curious to see how the technology is coming out. Well, not only affect the dry eye part of it, but how do they, you know, treat the, the root of the problem, which can sometimes be the eyelids itself. Well, that is definitely excellent information, Dr. Bass Hapley. Everyone, that was Dr. Shereen Bass Hapley. Dr. Bass Hapley, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. <laughs>